down, up and down. I'm not just describing the pattern of a yo-yo, but kind of reminded me of the 2016 Georgia Bulldogs season. I mean, they started off pretty well. I mean, they won their first three games, but then hit the skids by losing four of their next five, but won four of their last five to close out the year with some momentum. For Kirby Smart, first year at UGA, yeah, he saw some good and bad. Good, of course, the opening win over North Carolina, beating Auburn when the Tigers were ranked in the top ten in the country, and closing out the year with a bowl win, the Liberty Bowl, over TCU. But the season also had some painful moments, including the unexplainable upset loss to Vanderbilt at home, still can't believe that, and losing to their arch rivals in Florida and in Georgia Tech. But if you look at the picture for Georgia last year as a whole, the Bulldogs, I didn't think, did too bad. Got to remember, 8-5, and five, considering that they had to replace um, 8 of the 11 starters on defense. And the defense was still ranked 16th in the country in total D. They were impressive. And remember, the Bulldogs also had a true freshman at quarterback in Jacob Eason and Kirby Smart. It was his first year in Athens at you know, being the head coach. So not bad when you consider the whole picture. But this year, I know Bulldog fans are expecting more than 8-5. and five. As uh, Georgia, they will be the favorites to win the SEC East. We're going to begin offensively for UGA and the backfield. And I know Bulldog fans had to be ecstatic when they found out that both Nick Chubb and Sonny Michelle were coming back for one more year. I mean, let's face it, both are NFL ready right now. I mean, Chubb, I mean, his career, I mean, shoot, my gosh, second all-time leading rusher in Georgia history, a school that's just known for running backs. And, of course, the greatest of all, Herschel Walker, tops in the school in um, career rushing with well over 5,000 yards that he amassed in just three years. Well, Chubb entering his final year has an opportunity to you know get close to it. He would have to have 1,900 yards to surpass it. Won't be easy, but with Nick Chubb, you just never know. This has been a, a running back. Uh, that's given us a lot of thrills. Three years ago, rushed for 1,500 yards. Two years ago, was well on his way to another big year, but had that gruesome knee injury halfway through it. Last year, um, maybe mentally, you know, because of that injury, didn't look like the same back that we saw, but was still very productive in 2016. And I think he's got a lot to prove entering this final year to show that, hey, he could be that same back that we saw three years ago. Last year, had over 1,100 yards rushing, about five yards uh, per carry. Sonny Michelle, though, he's a guy you can't forget either. Uh, Michelle, by the way, is ninth all-time in school rushing with over 2,400 yards. Michelle last season uh, started two games. He had um, he's had eight starts in his career, a guy that had over 800 yards rushing a year ago, 5.5 yards per carry, which is a little higher than what Chubb had, and Michelle caught 20 passes. So Nick Chubb, Sonny Michelle, uh, quite a team that they have in the backfield. Quarterback we mentioned, true freshman from a year ago, Jacob Eason. So as you can imagine, he had a lot to learn quite fast. And, you know, this guy played his high school ball in the state of Washington. So he made that cross-country trip to Athens. And last season, 16 touchdown passes, only eight picks. There's one area, though, he can improve upon, completion percentage. He only completed 55% of his passes. Even though I know Georgia is a run-first type team, you still have to show the ability to complete more than 55% of your passes because you don't want defenses to just squarely focus on that ground attack if you cannot uh, throw the ball consistently. So Jacob Eason, not too bad in year number one, but let's see in year number two if that completion percentage can increase. Who will he throw to? Well, unfortunately for Georgia, Isaiah McKenzie has moved on. Uh, McKenzie, by the way, was the only Bulldog taken in this past spring's NFL draft. So Terry Goblin could become the number one guy at wide out 38 receptions a year ago, nearly 400 yards receiving. A tall target that they'll have as well in Javon Wims, six feet four inches tall. Um, he's a senior, had 17 catches and a touchdown a year ago. And you have Riley Ridley. Ridley, as a freshman in 2016, uh, played in 11 games and had a couple of touchdowns. Three of the six down linemen returned for UGA, and that will include... Um, Isaac uh, Nata, who made quite a few freshman All-American teams in 2016. Um, so you have him back. He had three touchdowns a year ago. Isaiah Wynn, a veteran offensive lineman, played a lot of left guard, played some left tackle. They'll put him at left tackle, um, it looks like, for his senior year. Started um, every game last year except for one, and has started in 25 of his last 26 games. And center, returning guy in Lamont Gilliard who started in all 13 games last year at junior. 
Other three offensive linemen, even though they're technically um, non-returning starters, they you know two of them have starting experience, and both are seniors. Um, the right tackle in Alden Bynum um, started in a couple of games last year, played in 12 of them, and a guy that played in all 13 games last year and started in a pair, uh, left guard in Dyson Sims. Solomon Kinley is really the only unknown as far as what he can do because he is a, a retro freshman and he'll play at right guard. The Bulldogs, terrific last year as far as turnover margin. They were plus eight in this category. One area, though, to really emphasize for Georgia because they only averaged 25 points per game last year, red zone offense. 45 trips inside their opponent's 20-yard line. The Bulldogs only scored touchdowns 25 of those 45 times. So one way to improve that point-per-game average, got to get touchdowns more often in the red zone. Looking at the defense for the Bulldogs, we mentioned it earlier, how productive they were despite a lot of new faces starting 16th in the country in total D giving up just 324 yards per game effective against the run and against the pass, and you return everybody except for one. Georgia will play the 3-4 lineman, and it does help to have Kirby Smart as your head coach because he definitely knows defense. We knew that from Alabama, but also, too, Mel Tucker, the defensive coordinator, did a good job last year. So Tritton Thompson back at defensive tackle, 56 stops a year ago, and you also have uh, John Atkins at a nose tackle a senior who had 22 stops in 2016. And rounding out that defensive line, uh, Jonathan Ledbetter, a junior, who started in four games last season. Linebackers, they're all good. And believe me, uh, they've got speed. Talking about the outside linebackers from the same position, Lorenzo Carter, you'll hear his name quite a bit, had five sacks a year ago, played in all 13 games, started in nine of them, and had, um, like I said, one heck of a uh, junior season. So the other linebacker on the outside, Davin Bellamy, who will play the will position, a senior with 51 tackles a year ago. Inside linebackers can play Roquan Smith, leading tackler from 2016, had 95 stops. And the other inside linebacker from the Mike position, Natres Patrick, who had 59 tackles. The secondary did lose uh, Maurice Smith, but you got everybody else back. Malcolm Parrish at one corner had 49 tackles, a senior, started in every game last year but one. And the other corner, DeAndre Baker, started in seven games. He's a junior and had 31 tackles. And the safeties, Dominic Sanders, led the team in the interceptions with three. And at the strong safety position, you have Aaron Davis, who had 54 tackles and started in 11 contests. So the Georgia defense... This defense, I'm not saying they're as good as Alabama's, but I think that they are comparable considering what they did last year and considering all that they have coming back in 2017. As far as the place kicker goes, we'll see how Rodrigo uh, Blankenship fares. He was consistent in his freshman year, 14 of 18 field goals made, but did not make a field goal last year beyond 46 yards. And the punting situation, Marshall Long, we'll see how he does last year. He started as the punter, but broke his kneecap. Looking at the schedule for Georgia, you're going to notice several key road games on this slate, including the second one against Notre Dame. But this one could favor the Bulldogs because Notre Dame's big weakness is stopping the run. And, of course, we know that Georgia specializes in running the football. Some other contests, the conference opener at home against Mississippi State, who I think will be improved, but the game's being played between the hedges, so I like the Georgia Bulldogs in that one. The next couple of games, though, are in the Volunteer State. Might remember Tennessee last year won against Georgia on the final play of the game on a Hail Mary. And then the following week, got to play at Vandy in Nashville. Last year, the Commodores beat Georgia. Of course, the world's largest outdoor cocktail party in Jacksonville against the Florida Gators. Last year, Georgia only scored 10 points against UF. And there's Auburn on the road. The Tigers are going to be one of the better teams in the SEC, so that will be a difficult game in early November. And rivalry game, Georgia Tech at the end of the season in Atlanta, which might actually help Georgia because the last four games in this rivalry, the road team has won. And the games have all been competitive, too, by the way. The team that's won this game has won it by six points or less since 2013. The Vegas projection has Georgia at 8.5 wins. I think Vegas is a little behind on this one. Georgia's defense alone and their ground attack, I think, make the Bulldogs one of the better teams in this conference and the best team in the SEC East. I've got Georgia winning 10 games, and again, I've got them winning the East Division. 
Does Georgia have enough against the West Division champion? Find out later this month on my college football playoff preview show. That's my look at Georgia. We'll see you next time.